Hi everybody, I'm Pieter Valentine. I've written two books, The Resident's Voice from a Dementia Unit and The Resident's Rise from a Dementia Unit. Now, for this video, it's going to be about anxiety and helping uh, people with anxiety in dementia units. So this time again, I'm going to bring in Susan, the granddaughter, and she's going to be coming in to help her anxious granny as best as she can uh, in the dementia unit. Now, of course, with anxiety, anxiety and depression often go together, depression being the previous video. They often go together, they're intermixed. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to tease them out and just focus on the anxiety aspect. Now, of course, coming into a dementia unit is very anxiety provoking for, for everybody, you know, most people coming in because it's like so foreign. If you've been living on your own for 20 years with your cat and, you know, your little house and garden and, you know, the same routine every day, cup of tea, toast, toast for lunch and something for, you know, it's all very simple, isn't it? Living on your own when you're older, it's just a nice little quiet, slow routine. But you come into a dementia unit, no, it's like flat, well, you know, and it's, yeah, it's pretty flat out. I mean, it's full on, full on activity. You know, there's, you know, all the nurses and carers coming in for day shift, afternoon shift, even, evening shift. There's doctors, there's cleaners, there's laundry women. There's like, it's a big staff needed for, and visitors coming and going, phones going, medication rounds with trolleys. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not relaxing. It's not relaxing. And there is a lot of noise. You know, even though, yeah, I mean, just the medication trolleys are usually noisy. The kitchen is very noisy, often in the same dining uh, lounge as the residents sitting watching the TV. Kitchen just, what, 20, well, no, 10 metres behind because then it's easy for the residents to go from the TV to breakfast to lunch to dinner you know so everything's together in the same room dining looking at tv nurses station you know so it's noisy really noisy sometimes it can get you know well you know tinnitus uh, inflaming i don't know how the residents cope with the noise to be honest i mean there's quiet times maybe hand over at afternoon tea when all the nurses are back in the nurses station you get an hour of peace and Maybe at night, after dinner, it's more quiet, but other than that, it's quite noisy. So if you're not used to noise, it can be provoke anxiety. Then, of course, the other thing, being with so many people, 30, well, you know, however many people in the unit, say 30. All these strange people, you don't know any, anybody, you don't know the routine, you don't know, you know, even why you're there half the time. So that's why orientation is so important going back to that orientation topic you know going back to granny and just saying you know Susan saying granny you're here because of your memory you know problem and uh, you've got your own room here and all the meals are covered you know every all the finances covered you're you're well looked after you're getting good meals you know we come and visit you often we support you you know just so that they know that actually their home is there now and why they're there just go through that over until granny has got that okay look we'll set up the bed comfortably for you you've got your favorite duvet your mohair rug you can lie down and relax with your feather pillow you know where to come to room 158 on the door clearly with your name you know, so she's orientated. She's got her own space. She's got her own place. She's got her own bed, just like at home. She's got her own armchair to sit and relax in, footstool, magazines, and, you know, really, she can continue her life like that if she is orientated to the fact that that is actually what's happening now. Not just to drop off Granny and think she'll just work it out. I mean, no, not at that age of 89 or 90 when she's been living in the same house for 50 years and then with dementia and all the memory loss and the whole thing, you know, it all has to be gone through. And of course you'll forget, you know, and you'll th how many times do I have to explain this? Well, a lot. <laughs> and that's somehow you have to find it within yourself to 
had the patience or tolerance or whatever to repeat it and not get bored with it. Uh, that's a bit of a trick, I have to say. But you just have to accept that that's part of it. You know, you just have to try and, when you answer back, as if it's the first time you've said it, so it doesn't get to be a burden for you thinking, oh, I've said this a hundred times and I'm sick to death of it. You know, just make it like conversation. It's just another conversation, repeating the same thing. <laughs> and, I mean, the main thing is that there's benefit to it. You know that, well, it, there is so much benefit, much, actually a lot more benefit repeating something that they need to know to orientate them than just main, mundane old conversation. So, you know, there just needs to be that sort of switch of awareness. So anyway, um, anxiety is different to depression, of course. You know, depression is flat energy and, you know, the person needs to be motivated and moved along and encouraged to sort of join in and be part of all the activities. But, but anxiety is a, a different experience. It's like the person's on edge, you know, they're uptight, they're tense. And, you know, with dementia, mind spin is part of the high-stress dementia experience anyway. So if that combined with anxiety, which is also stressful thinking, it's not a good combination. So really, a person with stress and anxiety really needs to relax. We know that, relaxation. Now, to relax, you need to be in a place where everything's calm, quiet, familiar. So that's why the room, the beautiful room, the beautifully set up room, is where Granny goes to relax. And this is where the orientation comes in. This is where the beautiful room comes in, the comfortable bedding, you know, um, getting to know the carer, Sally, I mean, Sue, Sally the mother, Susan the daughter, getting to know the carer, any wants, anything that Granny needs, anything I need to know, you know, getting to know her community, just making it as easy as you can for Granny. You know, explaining to her when breakfast is, when lunch is, the routine of the unit. So she, she gets familiar with the staff, that this is the charge nurse and this is your carer. Just, you know, one or two things a day, just keep repeating, you know, explaining in detail about the carer, the lovely carer, your lovely carer, Anna, whoever. You know, she looks like this and she helps you at this time and she does this. And, you know, there's so many things to explain. That Make that your conversation with Granny. You know, it's much more helpful, all these points, uh, to talk like this to Granny than about what's going on outside, which she's not part of anymore, you know, except maybe Christmas Day or out on Sunday lunch if she's lucky. So, yeah. Discussing things in the unit, about the unit, and orientating her to the unit. That's the conversation now. <laughs> and hopefully you can become interested in that. It does actually become interesting. Because the, this way, you as the visitor get to know the staff and the, the carers and the others because you're interested in them. You're interested in Granny getting to be familiar with them. Even if she doesn't remember their names, that does not matter. Just as long as she recognises them and knows them and knows what they do and is familiar with the, the routine. And she'll thank them and she'll thank their dear for the help and they'll still chat. Very few of the um, residents seem to pick up, oh, I don't know, oh, Occasionally they'll pick up the name of the carer or the charge nurse, you know, but it's not often. They usually just refer to everyone as like nurse, actually. Thank you, nurse. Whether they're a carer or whoever they are, they're all nurses. So that's all right. So reducing the anxiety is just as simple as that, really. The relaxation, you know, winding down, having time out. Um, not putting too much pressure on them, especially when they're going through a real anxious spin with dementia. And you can see that. Glassy eyes, frozen expression, tense shoulders. You can sort of see them sort of switch off or just when they just look blank. And that's when they're completely blanking out. They don't know a thing. Take Granny back to her room. Lie her down. Rug, pillow and just be quiet. Sit on the sofa if you're the visitor. Just leave her, let her be. That's really the best. Let her be until the phase is over because it's really stressful. And uh, you'll know when Granny comes around. You can just, then that is the time that you can sit back on the chair or sofa and be on your iPhone and stuff. 
but not when you're with Granny, you know, that's too distracting. But when she, when you can see her come around a bit and maybe say, hello dear, or, you know, perk up, then you know that that, that spin has settled and she might need to recover a bit from that. Um, generally the morning tea trolley comes around, doesn't it, twice a day, or you can go and get a cup of tea for her, actually that is a good idea. You can go and get a cup of tea for her, that's actually another subject, getting a cup of tea. I mean, maybe I'll make that another subject with the food, because actually getting a cup of tea is not that easy, because everything's locked up, and you have to know where the key is, and you have to unlock the fridge, and whatever. Anyway, once you know all the routine, you can get her a cup of tea, but we'll include the actual routine in another video. Bring the cup of tea back, and have a cup of tea with Granny, and take a cup of those cups of tea, and a little wee chat, or and take Granny back to reality, you know, you have to wonder what reality is sometimes, but the reality of the unit, say that. Um, once she's um, organised back to the reality of the unit, and herself, and that you're there to help, then, um, you know, from there it's another day, and she can start trotting, you know, starting to make her effort now. So then, once she's settled, then you can just quietly take her out from the room. If it was, yeah, if it's been that high level dementia spin, you'll get to see the levels. As I explained, the high level, the moderate level is just when, you know, the anxiety comes and goes. Low level is just like now and then, like most of us, so not a worry. But um, after the high level, the person still needs a bit of encouragement. Maybe just go back to the room and sit with them for a while in the lounge, orientate them, you know, lunch is coming up, Granny, you know, um, and just chat with them, maybe joining in with the, you know, Netflix documentary, if it's David Attenborough or something nice, second row not too stimulating, and then she can quietly ease back in. So these are some techniques to help Granny with anxiety. And you'll get to know, once you've been there for, for a while, the various grades of anxiety, whether it is that catonic sort of uh, state, really they need to lie down and to get over that dementia spin, which is the high level, moderate stress when they're just like really tense and uptight. Maybe just a walk outside in the wheelchair is enough for that. And then if it's that low level anxiety, just to you know, not be too worried about that. You, they can still make an effort in that level and join in the activities and make an effort like everybody else. So that's the end of the session today. Thank you.